Universal moral intuitions exist. When you're watching the Sam Harris, Jordan Peterson debate, they get to a part where they both agree. Universal moral intuitions exist. Now, if we start with that as our precept, precept, we can now analyze the phenomenon known as religion. And we can say this, premise number one, universal moral intuitions exist. Premise number two, a religion is only as valuable to the individual practicer of that religion and the society at large insofar as it aligns itself properly with universal moral intuitions. One way Peterson has taught us to look at the Bible, it is, it is stories. Stories that transmit ethics. Transmit ethics into the individual and into the society at large. It is, it is stories. You the atheists who say it's fiction. Don't matter. Don't matter. It's the ethical truths that it is transmitting into the individual that is important. We can analyze those ethical truths from a scientific, rationalist point of view and say, are these ethics correct? So premise number two, a religion is only as useful insofar as its precept or its teachings or its warnings and admon admonitions line up properly with what are universally agreed upon universal moral intuitions. So, take for example the Tao Te Ching. Prior to me becoming a Christian, I was reading the Tao Te Ching a lot. There's some truth in the Tao Te Ching. There is wisdom in the Tao Te Ching. Yes, there is, I promise. Success is as dangerous as failure. Whether you go up the ladder or down the ladder, your position is shaky. That's from the Tao Te Ching. So, uh, it's paraphrased, but that's roughly what it said. That's actually wise. That's actually transcendent wisdom. The second I read that, I knew that was true. Success is as dangerous as failure. You tell that to people. If you could internalize that, I internalized that truth as soon as I read it because I knew it was true. If you could teach that to Hollywood movie stars when they get their first taste of success, the, half the 50% of the time people destroy themselves when they get success. Why? Because it's as dangerous as failure. I would argue it's more dangerous. I'd argue it's more dangerous than failure. Failure is easy. Trust me. <laughs> yeah, trust me. It's really easy. We've been doing it for a long time. <laughs> it's not really very dangerous at all. There's no, just no downsides. I mean, the downs, yeah, there's downsides, but it's not dangerous. I've been doing it forever. <laughs> I've been doing it for 20 years. It's easy. It's easy. It's not dangerous at all. So, success is as dangerous as failure. That's the truth embedded in the Tao Te Ching. Now, the Tao Te Ching is successful only as a religion, only insofar as it is embedding its practitioners with universally acceptable wisdom. In other words, universally accepted, universally transmittable morals, ethics. Analyze the Bible using the same precept as your tool. The same precept as your tool. So, let's be Richard Carrier for a sec. Let's say Jesus doesn't exist. Jesus didn't exist. Who cares? Okay. See? Helping the atheist. Yeah, all right, fine. I agree. He, doesn't, he didn't exist. Fine. Where does that leave us? That leaves us Jesus as a mythological construct. Can we now analyze properly how this mythological construct, let's just say for argument's sake, that he didn't exist, now he's a mythological construct. We can still analyze the ethics that he transmits in the person of Jesus Christ. We're meant to identify with Jesus, walk as Jesus walked, live as Jesus lived. So we can take his teachings and we can study them analytically, as atheists are wont to do. Let's take the teachings and look at them analytically. Take the Sermons on the Mount. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Well, that seems to emphasize mercy. That seems good. Goes around healing the sick. That emphasizes compassion. That's a compassionate thing to do. My brother-in-law became a Christian. Immediately. Came out to California and he became a Christian right away. Because he was, you know, bedazzled by the, by the transformation in me. It was pretty shocking. I went from, uh, you know, just a kind of alcoholic, smoked two and a half packs of cigarettes, kind of cool burnout sort of <laughs> loser, whatever, um, to overnight, stop smoking, stop drinking, boom. 
So he became a Christian right away. Immediately, people said that the change in him was be- he was a hundred times a better person right away. People said he's much more compassionate, much more caring. Now that should happen if you're having a genuine religious transformation. You can even analyze that. There are debates about it. It's called intrinsic religiosity versus extrinsic religiosity. In other words, is it a transformation that has affected you on the inside, changed your behavior? Doesn't matter if there's an actual God. It changed your relationship to the universe at large. Doesn't matter if there's an actual God. You can still analyze a transformation within an individual. Is it intrinsic or extrinsic? Think of it this way. Did he actually turn into a more compassionate human being, which he did? Or do you just turn into like a religious, you know, get in, get in this person's face because whatever, they're gay or this or that. You all know what an extrinsically religious person is. Look how religious I am. What you are practicing is sin and sin alone. You all know that type. Some of you may know the other type. I've heard, a, I've talked to atheists now a few times and they've told me about the other type. The type who genuinely seems to believe in something that is, if not real in reality, actually real to them and actually informing their ethical decisions in the real world. That is true religion. And we can analyze it as a useful sociological tool. Is it beneficial to people? And the parts that are toxic, we can actually tone them down easily. Say religion is toxic. Need not be. There's nothing Jesus taught. Yeah, there's a couple of sayings here and there that you'll, you'll debate you know, Christians about to try and win arguments. But there is nothing that Jesus taught that is at, actually ethically wrong. And if you internalize, if you don't even need to believe in Jesus as an actual human being, you don't need to believe in him as God in the flesh. There are atheist Christians out there. You can internalize the, the teachings and you can focus on the ones you like. <laughs> you can focus on the ones that seem good to you and seem positive and seem actually socially useful and beneficial. A lot of messages in the Bible will be more humble. Humbling yourself. Humble yourself. Humble yourself. Humbling yourself. Why do you think I'm so humble and lovable? <laughs> <laughs> you, oh, you don't? All right, well, whatever. I thought I could slip it by. No, no, didn't buy it. All right, whatever. All right, fine, whatever. I'm working on it. So, anyways, I'm kind of rambling, but the point is actually really good, and I'll make more videos on the same point, so it doesn't matter if I'm rambling. We can analyze the ethical content of the Bible as analytical human beings, and we can decide piece by piece is this good ethical, are these good ethics? Is this a positive thing? Is this something to be transmitted? Is this something to preach? Is this something to preach? Or is this something to tone down? And we can even study the sociological phenomenon known as Christianity, town by town. This congregation, people seem to be happy, well-adjusted, leaving better lives, not full of hate. More at peace with themselves, more at peace with the world. Well, what's being emphasized in those sermons? As opposed to these sermons where everyone's, you know, a hate-filled ideologue. Probably pretty easy. Probably pretty easy to analyze, to using, using social, the tools of science, to analyze religion as a sociological phenomenon. Decide ahead of time. These are good, universally recognizable ethics. These line up with a lot of things taught in the Bible. Maybe not absolutely everything, but we don't need to keep debating the parts that seem contrary to the whole. It's kind of a scam. It's kind of a scam. It kind of is. I mean, if you don't believe that the Bible is the inerrant word of God, what, what on earth do you care if it says X? <laughs> Unless you're just trying to win in a debate. So, anyways, I'll make more videos on the topic. That's all for now. Amen.